All right, guys, I want to say a few words about human enhancement by way of that Buchanan chapter we read from Beyond Humanity and the Sandel piece as well. So with human enhancement, here is our question. Right? Is it morally permissible to alter human biology directly and intentionally in order to enhance certain of our capacities or create new ones? When we're talking about human enhancement, um, the modes of bringing it about and range from direct germline genetic intervention, modification of the genome, uh, up to drugs that are available on the market today, Ritalin, Adderall, and so on. In terms of types of enhancements, we have physical enhancements, in other words, enhancing uh, speed and strength, and we have cognitive enhancements, maybe memory, or processing power, or just general cognitive enhancement. Um, uh, emotional enhancements, mental enhancements, uh, moral enhancements, all these different types of enhancements, and that's what we're talking about. Now, the point that Buchanan is driving at, not only in the first chapter, but also in the rest of the book, and that he really wants to have us understand is that enhancement is not a new human activity, and even biological enhancement. So he mentions, uh, you know, the invention uh, so uh, of literacy and numeracy and um, transportation and uh, social institutions and even the advent of agriculture and things like this 10, 12,000 years ago. These are types of enhancements that actually do affect and modify human biology. So with literacy, for instance, uh, I don't just learn new information when I learn to read. I also develop a physical and physiological capacity that I didn't have before and that allows me to absorb new information. Likewise with agriculture, nutrition. Uh, so enhancement is not a new activity. And although obviously uh, there are any number of really, really important ethical issues that arise with human enhancement, they aren't um, peculiar necessarily to biomedical enhancement. Right? There, there are dilemmas that we have, but uh, what Buchanan is trying to do is establish this continuum of enhancement. It's a regular human activity. It's been going on for a long time. Now, in the debate, there are obviously a, a lot of ethical dilemmas that are going to arise, but some of them can kind of be nipped in the bud if we challenge or problematize some of these assumptions that critics of enhancement in particular will bring to bear. Um, so that's what Buchanan wants to take issue with at the beginning of the chapter. So, you know, critics of enhancement, they make these claims or they have these assumptions that ground their arguments. We need to challenge these, right? So Buchanan's going to say it's false um, that biomedical enhancements will necessarily be zero-sum goods, and it's false that they'll necessarily be uh, first and foremost market goods, and it's false that they'll necessarily be expensive, and it's also false, Buchanan suggests, that the only role that government will have to play uh, is a, a regulatory one. So with zero-sum goods, what do we mean? Uh, zero-sum good uh, is sort of any good where one person has it, the other person suffers as a result. Any sport where there's a winner and there's a loser and it's impossible to tie, that's a zero-sum game. The notion, writes critics of enhancement, uh, will suggest that your gain is my loss, right? Your enhancement is my deficiency. Buchanan's suggestion is that no, that's not necessarily the case. And in fact, what we'll see uh, are network effects once we get a critical mass of people with uh, enhancement. With the internet, for instance, um, if there were two people in the universe of the internet using it, well, we just have a couple of web pages, it wouldn't be very interesting or exciting. But when we have 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion, 6, 7 billion, however many people we have using the internet, it becomes a much more exciting place and there are benefits to be had. So we see network effects. In other words, we will get a benefit once, uh, you know, a critical mass of people have access to enhancements. Um, the notion that uh, enhancements will necessarily be market goods as well, Buchanan thinks, is mistaken. They will, no doubt, in our liberal capitalist society, be market goods. That is to say, they'll be available for purchase by private parties on the market. But in time, they'll probably be seen to be very beneficial. And so they'll be understood as uh, public goods. 
in much the same way as you know we initially had private fire departments in schools and healthcare, and now it's understood more that these sorts of things are public goods. We have fire departments, we have schools. Um, you know, most countries anyway have have healthcare. These are public goods, and enhancements might um, turn out to be the same sort of thing. Uh, third, Buchanan. Third, Buchanan wants to suggest that uh, biomedical enhancements uh, will not necessarily be expensive. No doubt they'll be expensive at first, um, but after a while, if they are in fact seen to be important public goods, they may be subsidized by the government. So they may not be expensive. It's also the case that with enhancements, like with most technologies, they're expensive at first and inaccessible to most people, but after a while they become more accessible. You know, back in the 80s or whatever, uh, you used to have to uh, be a billionaire to have a cell phone, according to the that Michael Douglas movie, Wall Street, anyway. <laughs> so the price does go down over time. And then the fourth thing is that, you know, critics of enhancement tend to say, okay, we'll, we'll just, you know, the government will have this regulatory role, the FDA, and that'll be all. But again, as Buchanan is pointing out, with subsidization or public campaigns or what have you, we will see this movement towards uh, government involvement. Whenever you have an important development in whatever realm, you know, the government is going to take an interest, uh, whether with traditional sort of uh, biopolitical themes, regulation of bodies, women's bodies in particular, or with you know these biomedical enhancements that are on the horizon, it's likely that the government role will extend well beyond the regulatory sphere. Now, when opponents of enhancement want to argue against it, they'll have recourse to this argument that enhancement isn't natural, Pretty understandable argument, okay, you know, enhancement isn't natural, it seems strange, you've got to modify the genome, that's unnatural, take drugs for, uh, you know, physical or cognitive performance, that's unnatural, and so on. But pro-enhancement theorists are going to point out, well, that uh, to say enhancement isn't natural is not to say that enhancement isn't good because the natural is not equivalent to the good. Here, we've listed here, you know, how about some natural things here? Bubonic plague, Ebola virus, uh, you know, HIV, Alzheimer's, heart attacks, malaria. These things are all natural, but we resist them, right? We um, oppose them actively with our technology, with our uh, therapies, um, and these these are natural things, right? So, say enhancement isn't natural. Well, there. Are, Lots of things that are natural, but natural isn't necessarily good. Go to the health food store or something and you buy, you know, a bag of potato chips that says all natural. Those potato chips might be better than some other bag. But if they are good, they're good in virtue of some property that they have or some consequence that they create, that they produce, and not in virtue of the naturalness, even if in practice, Things that are natural often tend to be good, which isn't necessarily the case, of course. A second here, talk about evolution, evolution by natural selection. And in fact, evolution selects for reproductive fitness and not good as the way uh, we understand good, the good things in human life, or relationships, or love, or intellectual activity, art, music, all the good things in life. Well, evolution just isn't concerned with these things. Evolution is concerned to ensure that the traits that uh, are adaptive and heritable uh, get passed along. Have a trait that helps you reproduce, that trait is going to be passed along. Evolution uh, is concerned with reproductive fitness, fitness to pass along your genes and nothing to do with uh, the good life as we understand it. So again, saying enhancement isn't natural uh, is fine, um, but it isn't saying it's not good. And then lastly here, the natural as a pejorative term. Pejorative meaning, you know, derogatory, derogatory. So uh, if critics of enhancement are going to say, you know, enhancement isn't natural, um, if they mean by natural, not human made, well, of course, that's true, right? Uh, uh, enhancements are not natural. They are human made. Um, but just because they're sort of an artifact of what human beings do, 
um, does not make them bad. Everything that we sort of uh, are involved with on a daily basis, me talking into this webcam or you know this table or this couch over here, um, these are all artifacts of human activity. Right? So to say uh, enhancement isn't natural is fine, it's true, but it doesn't tell us much. Um, on the other hand, if by natural critics of enhancement mean you know, proper, or fitting, or suitable, or socially acceptable, then that is fine too, but an argument needs to be made